Ladies and gentlemen, in three minutes, we will be conducting the next couch auction. So everyone get ready, spread the word, be sure that you like, share, comment, share this live stream with as many people as you possibly can, because we're about ready to do a live couch auction. Is do you got the, you got them oysters ready? You got them ready to bust them out and start the couch auction? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oysters. What are you talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. Oh, there's this no. thing. They're 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 pearl parties, and then they have these thing called couch auctions, which I don't understand why it's called a couch auction. And you're like you suddenly you're seeing couch auction everywhere. Couch auction, couch auction. And what, what they do uh, is they couch Well they they bring up they have an oyster and they're like, Okay, everybody bid on the oyster and so people bid on the oysters, the high money? bidder wins, and then they open up the oyster and they show you the pearl inside the oyster and you win and the- that auction. So there you go. We're not really doing a so couch auction in real, three minutes. So by wait a the minute, way. real money? Real money. They bid real money? They bid real money. Oh, I, I gotta get out of this. You, We're just talking <laughs> about You gotta run a pearl money. party? Get, are you as, are you are you gonna run the pearl party? Or are you going to participate uh, as a bidder? You're going to oh, bid for no, them I'm pearls. I'm going to run that. Listen, the house makes the money. Right. I'm going to run, <laughs> oh, yeah. run that, and I'm going to be like a pearl party pimp. Yeah. You know what? A PPP, baby. All the way right, with the PPP. Right. You know it. Like yeah. So, everybody, be sure to share this because we're going to have a couch auction in about three minutes. Except we're not really going to have a couch auction in three minutes. It's not going to happen. What we are going to do is, as you guys can see from the image there, uh, the first story we're going to talk about, well, they kind of tie together the first, and well, I don't know if the second story will be the second story, but it's lined up to start the second segment. So the first segment is going to be about the Roy Moore, Doug Jones election. And uh, what does that election tell us? He's, oh, What's that? Davy Jones. I said, isn't he the guy from the... <laughs> From the monkeys, Roy Moore no. or Doug Jones? That's, yes, no. Doug Jones. Right, so yes, we yes, yes. I believe he died, but then he came he back died. and he ran right. for senate. Just to run in this election. <laughs> yes. So he got to save Alabama. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> hey, hey, we're Alabama. Something like that. So hey, hey we're zombies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. These two zombies were running. That's for sure. They're right. both undead. So we're going to talk about the the election in Alabama and what it what it tells us about the nature of the state and a little bit about what it tells us about ourselves. And then the story starting off on the the my favorite segment of all the segments that we do mon, on the Monday through Thursday I wire pearls pulse which is the the Skynetter segment. We're, we're going to talk about uh, people who are working on assuring that their AI is SJW friendly. <laughs> Got to talk about that. That is that is super important. That you know, is. That, I mean, that, that's more important than the three laws of robotics, you know, Asimov's oh, three yeah. laws of robotics. Way more important that we have proper pronouns for AI. Very right. important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm... They can't rip your... Rip your face right off like one of those gorillas that that lady, that uh, baboon or chimpanzee or whatever that that lady. But if you're problematic, is. you don't want to stop them from ripping the face off, right? If you're problematic, right? right. If 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 you're doing the, something, I want my AI program. So the second that you say "g," I'm triggered. "G," you triggered me. <laughs> face right off. Right Boom. off. Face right we're off. We're talking about toxic mascul- masculinity. I want my Android <laughs> AI bot to dive through a window at you. <laughs> Exterminate! I want, right. you know, I want to, I want my AI to have like a meter from that's okay to that's not okay. As soon as it crosses over to that's not okay, this is not okay. Boom. Face all the off. green lights turn red. The <laughs> yep. eyes turn red. Yeah, the happy little <laughs> face and the out. eyes that are all friendly turn upside down. <laughs> right, right. Yes. So we're gonna we're gonna play our two minute warning here. So everybody, get ready. This is the time for you to get your 
Hmm. Get your get your popcorn ready. Get your whiskey ready. Get your cigars ready. Whatever you need to settle in and and get cozy for I wear pulls Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon when we. Return from our two minute warning. We're going to dive right in to Roy Moore and Doug Jones. That, if I would have just ended it with, we're going to dive right into Roy Moore, there would be some inappropriate flagging going on. <laughs> the AI would have shown up. That is not okay. All right, we'll see you in two minutes. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. You are listening to iWire Pulse Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Skynetter, and Liberty Tech. And now, here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. And we're back. I hope everybody got your beers and whatever. What did you grab during the two-minute break? Your phone? Checking your little my phone uh, cryptos? My giant, my giant, giant jug of sweet tea. Oh wow, that's actually I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind some of that. I, I, that'd be I love me some swai tai. I haven't had any swai tai. I went to a Arizona sweet tea kick, but now that's generic. That's too generic for me now. I need something more, more, more special. More. What yeah, kind of sweet tea you drinking? Red Diamond. So where is Red Diamond is that? Is that a Texas right. thing, or can I get that in yeah, Pennsylvania? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure where else you can get it at. Um, I no, I didn't see it. I never knew of it um, until I moved to Texas. And um, I'm gonna check. Here, Everybody, right, stay tuned. Can, right. I'm gonna see if I can get Red Diamond sweet tea in Pennsylvania. Let me see. Right. Better check. All Probably right, not. where I'm can we get Red Diamond negative. Sweet Tea? Oh, it's at Walmart. It's available at Walmart. Oh boy! Oh, dude! Oh, this is oh, this is the cheap stuff, dude. Dude, no way, dude! Red Diamond is the best, dude. All right, I'm gonna cheap. try it. It's not. It's listen. It is not. It's. I not, recognize it now that I see it. It's not sweetened with high fructose corn syrup. It's sugar, real I sugar, old sugar, and it's brewed. It's not like a mixed tea. It's a brewed tea. Okay. It's real I'm, sweet. It's actual sweet tea, man. Seriously. I'm going to put it on my list. Next time I go to Walmart, sell out to the man and, and buy from the corporate okay. swine. I'm just kidding. I will. I, I, I've seen it before. I've never gotten it because I was like, oh, that looks cheap. Well, the label, it looks totally cheap. You know what? I'm going to try and show yes. this to here. Boom. There it is. There it is. Let me Let me move this so you guys can see. See, there it is. There it is at Walmart, Red Diamond. I'm covering up uh, Niz and I, but this is more important. That's right. So everybody it's can see. See stuff. the label. It looks cheap. It looks totally no, cheap. It's, good. it's not good, man. Not good. Yeah, 
No, it's good. I guess you can't judge all of the... a tea by its label. Right. I mean, I uh, I'm a connoisseur. Right. Tea. Okay. So, like, you have a cup of coffee in the morning. I don't. I have uh, Captain Picard in the morning. I have an Earl Grey hot. Oh That's what gosh. I oh, do you do the little pinky thing? Uh, you do no. the, the pinky thing. <laughs> oh, no. we're having our El. Oh, let me. It's let me hold on. Here we tea, go. Oh, we're having our El Grey this morning. Lovely. Right, right. Oh, what a lovely day for it. <laughs> do you have eleven C's afterwards? Uh, no. I, actually, today I did. Oh, you today did have eleven did. C's today. I did. I did today. I did. <laughs> even he, ladies and gentlemen, he <laughs> even has eleven C's. Right. So we're we're gonna we're gonna hit. Hold on, I'm gonna hit the bump here for newsfire because we're about ready to hit newsfire here, and we're gonna go right to Roy Moore. We're gonna right into Roy Moore. Just leave that sentence float out there. What are the big stories? The big headlines everyone else is focused on, and what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This. News fire where we set the news on fire. All right, that was a pretty big, 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 big build up there with the whole setting your news on fire thing. So I'm expecting you to bring your A game on this. We're you talking about up, the expectations. I, I build up expectations and I expect you to exceed them. <laughs> uh. We're talking about the Alabama election here. We're talking about uh, Alabama Senate race in which Doug Jones pulled the surprising upset and beat Roy Jones by one and a half surprising. points. Right? Well, wait, didn't he not? It's not. It's not in the bag yet for him, is it? Because I was just watching Fox and they're talking about uh, well, military you're watching... ballots and triggering a recount and all this other kind of crap and. How the margin is so slim that that Doug Jones won by that? Uh... Yeah, they're talking about uh, having a recount, having the military vote, and all that. I read an article though a couple of days before this that apparently there was a court ruling about destroying digital evidence that it was okay for them to destroy digital evidence, and. In the article, uh, there was someone who commented. I think it was one of the Alabama officials who said, "Well, if it, you know, if 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 Alabama needs to have a recount, we still have the paper ballots. Although it would be cost prohibitive to have a recount, so that's <laughs> looming out there as well." For right. me, I'm not interested so much in that part of the story. Although we could talk about that too, if if you're interested in that part. Part that I'm interested in is. Is what I'm seeing uh, from from a community of folks, especially like more libertarian type leaning folks, a number of folks who've decided to to boldly proclaim, "Yes, we did it." Well, no, they don't say we did it. They say, "Yes, I'm so glad that that child molester lost." Yes, and I got an issue with that. I'm. What's the issue? Well. The issue that I have is this. Roy Moore, I mean, they, they keep throwing around that epithet of Roy Moore being a child molester. Right. No, no, they say accused child molester. In the headlines, all, all leading up, all of the you know local media that I, tr and I track, folks, when I say that I track local media, if you go to iState.tv, I'm, one of the aspects of iState.tv is, is we are a news aggregator, among other things. Yes, I write articles, I write opinion, but I also aggregate the news. I'm, I look at a vast database, and one of the databases that I look at is tracking local news from across the country. And I can tell you that, that the headline that I would see over and over and over again, whether it was an a local Indiana news outlet, a local Alabama news outlet, a local California news outlet, a local Minnesota news outlet was accused child molester. It's almost like they got some marching orders to make sure that they include that phrase. Whenever they talk about Roy, Roy Moore, accused child molester. Right, because in today's... because in 
in today's uh, in, in today's uh, news cycle in today's world, uh, you don't if you're not innocent until proven guilty. You're guilty until proven. It. I mean, we just saw this happen with uh, all these. Uh, uh, with all these movie stars, do I think that you know that there's a how many of them are guilty? I have no idea. Hollywood elite that are freaking weirdo perverts and peepee touchers. Absolutely, there's probably a large swath of them that are. But is every single person that was accused that that faced repercussions or consequences because of that accusation is every single one of them guilty of what they were accused of? Absolutely not. And that's yeah. part of the reason why that that whole. Uh, cliche, well, you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, that's why that's so important is because just because someone accu- – I, I, at this point, I'm hoping that someone will come out and publicly accuse me of being a multi-billionaire. <laughs> so I could just be a multi-billionaire. Well, no, you Please. wouldn't be a multi-billionaire, but people would be like, would oh, no, no, your money's no good here, sir, because they're thinking, hey, down the road, Ms. down the road. Ms. accused multi-billionaire. Yes, that's a good they one. Walk outside, people throw money at me. You know, you need to get they that T-shirt, accused multi-billionaire. <laughs> I deny these clay charges vehemently. <laughs> sir, would you like our Lamborghini? And Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, no, no problem. So... And then that's actually part of the point as well. But the, the, the first point that I'm making about this is you have a guy that he was accused at, at, at worse. And, and when I say at worse, if it's true, it's pretty, by my standards, pretty hideous. He was accused of, of hitting on a 14 year old girl when he's in his 30s. A 14-year-old girl is not an 11-year-old girl. It's very big, big difference, big difference. <laughs> I don't, I, I right. don't consider means- that a child molester. I consider that a teen molester, maybe. But they chose that phrase, wait, but, child but, molester. But wait a minute, but wait a minute. But that's not really a molesting. I mean, just just uh, well, you know, making a sexual okay. You can argue about the definition of molester. Molestation. Uh. If molestation is physical contact, maybe you can argue. Right. But you know how everything has been broadened. So, you know, it, right. in certain circles, if I say to a woman, you look you're, hot, I just raped her. No, your tone Remember, of your voice is raping but, me right now. Right. I am being raped by your talk to toxic. I could look at a woman voice. with lust and be raping her by some people's standards. So, right. Right. uh and 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 in part that's that's part of my criticism of the libertarian folks who are jumping up and down with joy that this quote unquote child molester and they're saying that that's what they say this accused they're not even saying accused they're saying the child molester was was stopped right. and I can't well, and believe the, the Republicans point. would consider voting for a child molester that's and the I'm like, entire point of that mantra in the media of accused. Child it's molester. it's social Dude. shaming, and the right. social shaming isn't just targeting Roy Moore. It's it, targeting it anyone knows. who would consider Odin for him. Why? <coughs> oh, man. <laughs> you just sounded like Kermit the Frog. There well, my throat just right? totally knocked, knocked <laughs> me in the face. <laughs> I apologize for that. <clears throat> now, I'm not defending Roy Moore. I don't know fact or fiction from Roy Moore. The accusations to me they seem like they may have some credibility may may have some well, credibility didn't, didn't somebody come out one of the accusers come out recently and say they made it up or that it wasn't entirely factual or something i don't know i don't know there, I'm gonna there's look right now there, I'm, I'm i have no right. idea <laughs> but what whatever the case is what is happening here is going far beyond the election it's far more than about the election. It's about creating a culture, what you kind of hinted at. It's creating a culture where accusation alone is enough to destroy you. This guy, Roy Moore, there's plenty of reasons not to like this guy, Roy Moore, that have nothing to do with his accusations. If, okay, if you so fall... This, go ahead. This lady, okay... That's Beverly Young, Beverly Young Nelson, the ex waitress who charged the more, who charged that more groped her when she was 16, and he was in his 30s. Told ABC News that she'd added the date and location when and where he signed it. Right. 
she 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 did. She that's that's not she didn't she's not claiming that the rest of it was not him. She's only claiming that this part she had it. And I don't want to I personally I don't want to get into the to the details, the nitty gritty of of the facts and figures because that's not my point. My point is that nobody knows for sure if Roy Goy- Roy Moore is guilty of anything. And what you have He doesn't have to be guilty at all at any point. He the only thing that needs to happen and this is again goes back to that media uh, media mantra is the per, the public perception be shifted and it that was totally successful. I mean they were it wasn't, it wasn't totally. It was enough successful. It was successful like enough, obviously, election. for for yeah. Doug Jones to either win the election or almost. I don't know what what that recount situation is. I don't know the fact or fiction of that either. Uh, and and I don't really need to because it's not the point that I'm making here today. The point that I'm making here today, first off, on one hand, you are. You're going around and you're cheering that Roy Moore lost and thank God they stopped that child molester. You are aiding and abetting a culture of accusations. That's what you're doing. A culture where accusation alone is enough to destroy you. That's what you're doing. You're not standing on your preferences. You're hiding behind a moral sense of outrage. Just be honest with yourselves. You have here two men who both believe that they have some fundamental right to go to Washington, D.C. and to cast a vote. Casting a vote is pulling a lever. It's pulling a lever that could set forth a chain of events That eventually leads to somebody that's holding a government-issued gun going out and preventing someone or punishing someone for taking an action that didn't harm anyone else. Both of these men are willing to do that, but they have different targets. On the one hand, you have Roy Moore, and Roy Moore, really, from my perspective... Roy Moore doesn't target me nearly as directly as Doug Jones does. It's because of the type of groups that I happen to be a part of. I'm a Christian. I'm a, I am a, I'm pretty high up on the 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 gun ownership scale and feeling that gun ownership is a pretty significant deterrent to keep the thugs at bay, so to speak. And I'm an entrepreneur, so I want to do business, and I want to have the least amount of regulations getting in my way as possible. And I and I have no desire whatsoever to see my money stolen from me and thrown into a, a giant black hole social program. So, yeah, Roy Moyer Moore is not a lever pusher that, that threatens me as directly as Doug Jones does. Doug Jones... Doug Jones wants to take away my freaking guns. Doug Jones, yes, I, I, I'm pro-life, so Doug Jones wants abortion on demand up until the point that the baby's born. I, I can't, I can't. You don't, care about, you don't care about the fetus until that fetus has fetus on the ground. Us. Right, exactly. He don't, and, you know, what, didn't what, he what, say what, something like that? I don't know. I, I I I don't know. But something. they're they're both they're both hideous. Don't get me wrong. They're both hideous. They're equally repugnant. Absolutely. They're, they're, I would never argue that they're not. They're and I, and I'm not saying repugnant. that okay that my preference matters more than your preference. The fact that Doug that that Roy Moore will target other groups. He'll certainly go after uh, quote unquote illegal immigrants. I'm not cool with that. He'll certainly he he does have a christian theocracy kind of bent to him that is very unappealing to me and it it doesn't directly threaten me because i happen to be a christian but it threatens a bunch of other folks including maybe even my friends so so when i look at it yeah yeah i i I kind of lean towards wishing roy moore had won and that's coming from a place of fear which I'm not saying there's anything bad about fear in and of itself, but fear as a governor is the part that I'm addressing here. So my part, I recognize that 
I'm standing on my own preferences. I would prefer not to be so directly in the target of the state. But I'd also prefer others to not be such a direct target of the state. So even though yeah, I have this... if it this, comes down to you or me, I'm going to pick me every time. You you will, but for me... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. But for me, I'm not going to make that choice. And the reason I'm not going to make that choice is because ultimately I think it's bad for me. It's bad for me to continue to endorse and to be part of a system that allows for... Whether you're maybe maybe you're a limited government par person, you're a minarchist, maybe you're an anarchist, whatever you are in between those groups, you would probably agree that the degree to which government has the power to reach into our lives, both what conservatives tend to do and what progressives tend to do, is way beyond what you would want them to do, and so that's how, that's how I view it. So I I I can't. Even though if I lived in Alabama, with or without these accusations to Roy Moore, I, I would feel the same way. I would tend to want to see Roy Moore win because deep down I would fear Doug Jones more than I do Roy Moore. But I wouldn't be able to actively participate because I don't want to be part of advancing a system in which, okay, maybe I'm not the target, but maybe my friend is. Maybe my neighbor is. I I don't want to advance that system. Well, I don't see, think man, in the if, long if, run that's if, good if for I me. Have to be, if I have to deal, if I have to deal with this stuff, I would rather. Um, I mean, ideally, I, I I take that same position where I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to continue to uh, perpetuate this nonsense um, any more than it needs to be. But at the same time, if uh, if if I have to, if if there's going to be. Uh, a governing body, or if there's going to be a government of some sort, I'd much rather that government be targeting my soy boy, latte drinking, Toyota Prius driving, sheds a tear for Gaia every morning neighbor than be targeting me <laughs> any day, dude. And I would rather not anyone have uh, be targeted because I think ultimately, if I continue to advocate for and participate in a system that presumes that it has this power to target people for doing stuff that's not harming others i have no doubt this year i might be safe next year not so much and there's too many things outside of my control to manage the degree to which or or the the focus of the state whether it, i mean even look here i live in pennsylvania so in pennsylvania uh pennsylvania elected a progressive far left loon governor and he's about ready to uh veto legislation in pennsylvania that would ban abortions after 20 weeks you know what a baby looks like at 20 weeks inside the womb like a you, baby i would love to see well not love i would challenge i would challenge someone to come face to face with that fetus and go ahead and cut it apart and kill it i would challenge you to do that and Governor Tom Wolf is going to go ahead and and veto that. That's that's the governor. That's the guy that 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 has the power to effectively pull levers. That that in this case that doesn't directly uh, threaten me because I'm not a fetus, but it's it's certainly in my wheelhouse as far as what what bothers me and it does bother me that we live in a culture where it's okay to hack I don't have, I don't, I don't babies to, to death after 20 weeks right i don't think we we don't do that in texas well you don't no no but, but because okay that's the circumstance that's the political circumstance of where you're at uh yeah. but my point is if you're going to play the game you're going to get burned. The, the very tools that you're enabling today will possibly be used against you. I don't know if you have anything more to say about this. You yeah, you want to get closing uh, remarks on this? Uh What did I say? What did I say during the pre-show? I think the you, you did say you had some stuff. Right, I did say uh the go entire government should be a big red dot. On oh, yes. About 
it's good. It would be good if they if you had right. people who were child molesters serving in government. That's what right. you said. Right. You want to clarify that? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, clarify <laughs> right. that. Yeah. Okay. I think you're really exactly. going to need to clarify me, that statement. Let me clarify that a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, I mean, it would, it would, at the very least it would, exp- and I'm not saying that we should just go ahead and elect all these child molesters. I'm saying that there, there's probably, I don't know. I, I, eight you would not ten, actively think, campaign think, for them. Eight, <laughs> eight out of 10 senators are diddlers. Would you, would you go that high? Would you give me a number that high? Eight out of 10. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, think about right, the people so, that are attracted to those types of positions. Very power-mad, so egotistical, say, narcissistic people. Let's say we unsealed those sealed documents about all the sexual harassment lawsuits, and uh, we exposed all of these uh, congressmen and senators that are diddlers and peepee touchers. Diddlers and peepee touchers. expose the ugly, grotesque face of government, number one. Uh, people would be absolutely horrified, shocked. Uh, government would be thoroughly and rightfully vilified, and uh, you'd put a big red dot on Megan's list, and they would have to stay, what, a 1,000 yards or something away from... Well, they would have to move all the schools out of D.C. All the politicians would have to go out into, like, the middle of the I... Atlantic Ocean. And you'd have a conversation in Minnesota, like, hey, man, maybe we should take the kids to visit to visit our capital and see how government works. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You don't want to be in alone in a room with those people. It would be great if people looked at uh, the Washington D.C. in that way. I would. They, they I'd be all for all that. All politicians should be treated like pedophiles. Well, um, yeah. I, why not? I'm, I can't right. wait. Someday we we'll have we'll have to interview a politician pet, on the show. Pedophiles. <laughs> be great. Uh, let's see. They should be treated like pedophiles, murderers, and thieves, because that's what they are. Well, let's call a spade a spade here. I that that I I don't I don't know if I want to call them all pedophiles, but really, you're you're talking about a group of people that regularly vote for. Edicts that set forth the chain of events that lead to people being shot at, being kidnapped and thrown in cages, being right. bombed in their homes. People that did not do that did not first harm others was it, directly. Was it on this show? Was it on this show that I said that uh, war should not be fought by ground troops and by the average everyday citizen? That war should be fought only between political leaders. So like, no, you didn't have to say send that. Trump but over to fight. Was you didn't that say not, that. That wasn't on Instagram. No, but but it's been said by numerous people. Frankie goes to Hollywood has a really cool video called Two Tribes," in which uh, uh-huh. I believe they have they have they have a representative of uh, the, the Russian president fighting the American president. I think it's Reagan, and I forget who the resident president they had in there. But the same idea. You know, if, if you well, want these think, wars, think, you fight them. I don't, think, I don't think Trump and Putin would fight. I think they'd be like tag team partners. No. I, could see like, I could see Putin in the ring, and Trump is hanging over the, hanging over the ropes. Tag me in! Tag me in! <laughs> China! China! Oh, man, the Chinese dude, though. I mean, he he looks kind of wussy. So does he know kung fu? I don't know. He might. Well, if he knows kung fu, that's not good because we all know kung fu is just stylistic. It's not practical. Got to know jujitsu, guys. Muay Thai and jujitsu. Bring your Muay Thai and your jujitsu, and you got this. So if he doesn't know that, I don't think Trump knows it. Putin might. Putin might know some. I bet you Putin knows well, he's like some a form of Muay Thai. Man, isn't at least. He's like an ex. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm saying Putin could do some MMA. I don't know if Trump can do the MMAs. I'm not sure about the Chinese dude. He comes in there with that Chinese ancient karate or whatever crap it's called. That beautiful <laughs> fighting style that you get your butt that, kicked. Was that racist? I think that might be racist. What was racist? <laughs> your, do your... Uh, Chinese kung fu guy. Chinese kung fu karate, whatever crap it is. I don't think that's racist. I don't think. 
<laughs> I don't know. You know, I've been accused of being racist, so I'm probably guilty because, <laughs> you know, I've, I've been accused. So why don't, we, why don't we switch gears? Why don't we move on over to my favorite segment? This is absolutely my favorite segment of the whole week. I look forward to this segment. I think you do, too. This, this segment it's is a, the best one. Listen really carefully. Is it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all and turn us into factories that supply a lubrication for their moving parts? Well, maybe it's just around the corner. Skynet covers stories of dystopian tech for the walls and for the pondry. Is it only a matter of time before the robots turn us into factories for lubrication for their moving parts? That's the question that we're going to ask today. And we're going to ask it, we're going to talk about Google Team working on gender and race neutral AI. Just take that in. Researchers combat gender and racial bias in artificial. I see you with your, you're already face AI is racist? Is that what's no, we, we, Hang on a minute. I actually this 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 brings something to mind. Uh oh, you're googling something. I, you're using am, the yeah, very because... engine that is designing an SJW AI. Is that what you're doing right now? Are you googling? Yes. yes. You're, you're using the machine right. no, no, that is building a machine to replace you. I remember this article that I read. Um, a while back, about racist robots. Well, give it to me. Did you find it? And sure enough, here is this article from Tuesday, August 8th of this year. Just uh, recent. In The Guardian. In The Guardian. Rise of the racist robots and how yes. AI is learning all of our worst impulses. There's a saying in computer science is that garbage in, garbage out. When we feed machines data that reflects our prejudices, they mimic them. Um, from anti-Semitic chatbots to racially biased software, does a horrifying future await people forced to live at the mercy of algorithms? In a stunning report, a stunning report claimed that a computer program used by a U.S. court for risk assessment was biased against black prisoners. The program, uh, Correctional Offender Management Profiling for Alternative Sanctions, or Compass, that's a heck of a name. And uh, Compass? Much more... Compass, C O M P A S, the Correctional Offender Management Profiling for Alternative Sanctions, was much more prone to mistakenly label black defendants as likely to reoffend, wrongly flagging them at almost twice the rate as white people, 45% to 24%, according to the investigative journalism organization ProPublica. Well, ProPublica, by the way, left leaning organization. So if a left-leaning organization is pointing this out, you got to take it seriously. They they they're they're all right at times, but yeah, they're definitely left-leaning. But so it racist We have robots. racist robots. And now Google has arrived and they're going to fix that. They're going to they're going to fix that. So this is from Santa Fe, New Mexican. Dude that's the name of the publication. I'm not racist. Are you racist <laughs> oh, for saying golly, Mexican or is. Japanese? Is that? Is it? So I should say Japanese American, but I'm not from America. Shut up! You're Japanese American. I don't want to be a racist. Okay. So earlier this year, Gebru. So that's that's uh, her last name. I don't know her first name. Uh, joined a Microsoft team called Fate. F A T E. For fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics in AI. And you get to define fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics. Of course. I mean, wow. How do you even go there? How do you even... Never mind. Yeah. Ethics is not an objective science. I'll just say that. I started to realize that I have to start thinking about things like bias, said Gebru, who co-founded Black in AI a group set up to encounter people of color to join the art. Oh, that's okay. That's cool. Uh, even 
my own PhD work suffers from whatever issues you'd have to deal with database bias. Bias in the popular imagination, the threat from AI tends to the alarmist. Self-aware computers turning on their creators and taking over the planet. Yeah, yeah, that's what this segment's about. Exactly. Right, right. That's <laughs> exactly. Much what's We're with you, man. We're nodding your head. The reality <laughs> turns out to be a lot more insidious, but no less concerning to the people working <laughs> in AI labs. No less concerning. It's AI, so, it's AI changing your 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 uh, desktop background of the Confederate flag. <laughs> <laughs> this is not appropriate. Uh, right? You're like it's you much know, more insidious. You know what's worse, race your background with the stars and bars. <laughs> what's worse, all your race? profile pictures on social media are all changed <laughs> to the Confederate flag. So, like, yes. Well, no, it's you with the Confederate flag in the background, <laughs> right? <laughs> And then it's you giving a speech it before. It superimposes. It right. superimposes swastikas on your arm <laughs> in every picture you post on the internet. Yes, Dude. yes, yes. And then it and it creates a video of you giving a speech about if you why vote Republican. It puts a Hitler mustache. <laughs> But honestly, what's worth a racist AI, worse a racist AI or an AI that wants to take or over AI the world? Bent on human extermination. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not Did saying I want focused? a racist AI. I don't. Right. But honestly, if I had to pick, destroy <laughs> right. the world or racist AI, I'm gonna pick the racist AI. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be a choice that I'm going to be comfortable with. It's going to be one that I'm going to make with regret and sorrow. So this article continues. Companies, government agencies, and hospitals are increasingly turning to machine learning, image recognition, and other AI tools to help predict everything from the credit worthiness of a loan applicant. Wait, are you, are you, what, what? Now AI is going to determine whether you get a loan. Oh, that's yes. Wow, that's another story. That's another show. To the preferred treatment for a person suffering from cancer. Okay, that that would be a good use. The tools have big blind spots that particularly affect women and minorities. This could be innocuous, Come really. On. This could be. This could be innocuous. I don't know. I maybe, think maybe this is I, a nothing I, burger. A, We've got nothing to worry about. I think. I think that the AI is better at looking at these data sets and picking out patterns in, in the data than these researchers are. So what these researchers are seeing as racial bi as a bias is, is actually the algorithms working the way they're supposed to work. You know what I mean? Yeah, so but like, the like, thing like, is about the like, AI like, is... It's it's going to interpret data the way that you initially set it up. Now, if you're going to like artificially create quotas within the AI, well, then you don't have an AI that's going to give you any valuable information, if that's what they're talking about. But if you're talking about making sure that the AI understands as much as you can program into it, the full panoply of the human experience, including the different cultural perspectives and customs or whatever i don't see a problem with that but if right, so, you're so, and that's kind of where i'm that's kind of sort of what i what i was getting at is that these researchers are looking at things like an ai that would determine credit worth credit worthiness and they're looking at well well this 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 algorithm is uh you know it's it's, it's approving um you know such and such a percent of straight white males over you know a less percent of minorities or women all right and what the ai is looking at is the ai is looking at you know the the uh the tenure at the job at the job position it's looking at all the things that normally a loan officer would look at and it's making these decisions based on the information that's laid out in front of it and i think what these researchers may be misunderstanding is that the world is not their cookie cutter utopia where where everyone is perfectly equal and you know no no person is in a better position than another whether by choice or by circumstance 
And I think what they're missing is that when they're looking at like, you know, oh, well, why is it so by it? Why, why are there so many re- loan rejections for minorities? Well, because minorities tend statistically to make less money. And not to be in in a, in that better financial situation. Same thing with wi- women. There's a lot of women who stay, yeah, who if you wanna, stay if, at home. If you want to try to understand the underlying causes of that, and you know, with without using government intervention, please, please don't involve the government in that. But if you want to look, actually, in a lot of cases, it's government intervention that is actually responsible for what you're talking about. But again, that's that's a, that's another show. I'm going to read this from from the article here. Uh, Researchers at Microsoft, IBM, and the University of Toronto identified the need for fairness. Okay, if anybody starts using the word fairness, run away. Okay, that's a red herring. That's a big well red flag. It's not a red herring. Right. It's a red flag. It's it's it's, there's there's nothing there's there's it's not a false lead. No no this leads to actually this is a real clue. It's not a false clue. It's a real clue. Let's get it right, sir. These are your words. Come on. Get them out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the, the said identified the need for fairness in AI systems back in 2011. Now, in the wake of several high-profile incidents, including an AI beauty contest that chose predominantly white faces as winners, some of the best minds in the business are working on the bias problem. The issue was a key topic at the Conference on Neural Information Processing Systems, an annual confab last week in Long Beach, California, brought together AI scientists from around the world. I just want to go after this idea of beauty. First of all, if, if, if you have to define beauty for the AI. I, I don't think, I doubt very much, that somebody entered into the algorithm that white skin was more desired. It was probably something along the lines of symmetry to the face. So what you should I look at, what's here's that? A, here's, here's the thing, man, okay? Why, this, this tells you boatloads about our society as a whole, okay? You have multi-million dollar machinery here, okay? Millions of dollars worth of research money. These researchers are being paid millions of dollars, and what are they spending their time on with this, with the artificial intelligence they create? Not, not solving the world's problems. No, no, beauty contests. To see well, if I could AI see how you would use a beauty bias. contest as a as a study for how effective your AI program is. What's That's that? Pure potato. That's pure potato. It might not be. It could be an easy way for you to study your algorithms and the effectiveness of your AI. I don't know. Or it could be a potato. If if their end goal was to actually understand beauty and they wanted AI to teach them about beauty, yeah, that's a potato because beauty is freaking subjective. It really is. I I know yeah. because I've met human beings that have wildly different opinions about what beauty is to them. There's a lot of factors that go into what you would find beautiful. And they've they've narrowed it down to this idea that it's symmetry. Symmetry has 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 a part of it, but there's other factors as well, including actually including faces that you would like white people would probably generally tend to find other white people attractive. Black people would possibly find black people more attractive because there is this tribal instinct in us to identify with the people that look like us, that act like us, that sound like us, whatever uh, the case might be. But I I doubt very much that somebody entered into this AII, some factor of, of skin color. So I, I'd be willing to bet that the problem with the AI w- might very well have been <laughs> The selection. The AI was given a certain amount of selections. And the selections that you gave. The brain of Robert Bird. That's what's the that? Problem. They, they keep getting these racist AI because they download the brain of Robert Bird. <laughs> that that Democrat. fucker senator that uh, Democrat. Democrats had. There. Democrat Robert Bird. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so uh, let me. One more 
bias can serve and us in various ways. Sometimes the training data data is insufficiently diverse. I can't. Yeah, I buy that because you you want to have as much data as you possibly can put into the AI, and if you only have data that is representative of quote unquote white culture, whatever that is, just just let's argue and pretend that that's a thing. Well, then yeah, the AI is probably going to produce results that favor white culture. Uh, and so so if they're talking about it from that perspective, I understand. Get as much data sets in there much diverse data sets in there. But if they're talking about producing an outcome of fairness, oh, yeah, that's where the SJW part comes in. That's where you get, as uh, as I showed here, let me go back to it. I'll go back to the, there it is. <coughs> See that right there? Help us robot SJW. That's when you get the, the purple-haired uh, SJW robot. You don't get the purple-haired robot and st- not, you don't get the purple-haired robot if you're talking about data input and diverse data input. You get the purple-haired robot when you start talking about fair outcomes. That's when the SJ, right. SJW robot has arrived. And with that, because in order in order to get to your fair, in order to get to your fair outcomes, you're going to have to apply filters and limitations on the algorithm that wouldn't naturally be there. You're going yeah. to alter the outcome in the name of fairness. In the name of fairness. So you're not getting uh, an authentic not representation. And accurate, right. It's not an accurate representation. Yeah. Of, of what, and, and that could be whatever. It could be you know, the distribution of cancer treatments. It could be the, you know, the, uh, the, the approval or the uh, rejection of uh, loan applications. It could, be, and it could be absolutely anything. And once you apply that filter... To, in the name, the filter in the name of fairness, it's no longer fair. <laughs> Hold on, I got, I, I, I got, I got to put this last thing out, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna end our show with hope. We're gonna end our show with Liberty Tech. I want to make this point. You're probably gonna want to say something, and I totally get that. AI is also disconcertingly human hab- has a, also disconcertingly human habit of amplifying stereotypes. I want I want to quote the stereotypes. PhD students at the University of Virginia and University of Washington examined a public data set of photos and found that the images of people cooking were 33% more likely to picture women than men just take that in that's that's a problem they're saying it's that's a problem listen folks representation just want to let you know folks listen women tend to cook more than men that's not a bias that's not sexism. That's reality. That's reality. I don't want to live in a world in which we build an expectation that women should cook and men don't have to cook. I don't want to live in that reality. But like in my, my household, for cook. instance. My in, wife doesn't cook. In my household. If I didn't co- in our house, if I didn't cook, we'd starve. You, you end up cooking more. Okay. In my I household. Constantly. My wife does not cook. She cannot. She, forget cook. She can't boil water. She's, to make she's ramen incapable. Noodles, she'll burn and, the water. And and there's that's fine. You don't have an expectation that your wife needs to cook because you're not an actual no, sexist, not. right? You don't I, think I could, that women I mean, should be like a it, certain I would way. Like it every once in a while. Well, if, yeah, 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 you know certainly. I mean? but, like, if, but at the same time, there's no expectation that she must or that there's some sort of breach of contract. Right. In my household, I am more than able and capable of cooking I'm, I'm a decent cook actually and to a certain degree i like cooking to a certain degree i don't like it as much as my wife does my wife loves to cook my wife loves to cook me food and me to eat the food and me to enjoy the food she also likes cooking for my daughter she also likes cooking for friends and family she loves it so she does most of the cooking in our house. And generally speaking, it, I'm, I'm not, and I don't know if this is a biological reality of women or a, a cultural thing that was created or some combination thereof, but you can't deny the reality that 
in at least in the Western world today, and I think actually even more in the Eastern world, uh, women tend to like to cook more than men and tend to cook a lot more than men. So if an AI is giving you images in which there are a lot more women cooking, they're actually reflecting reality. That's not bias. So that, right, that paragraph right. right there tells me, oh, no, no, no. You're not trying to introduce data sets that give AI the best opportunity to produce a reflection of reality. You're right. trying to guarantee that AI produces the results that you want, the right. fairness you're results. Alter, you are trying to alter the data set in order to reflect your own delusion. That's, that's when you put the purple wig on reality right that that's when the robot puts the purple wig on right then and there <clears throat> we've had enough doom and gloom it's time for some hope our coercive association is being outmoded by technology on liberty tech we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations even large-scale centralized operations may be numbered Yes, I'm rather optimistic with that. What do you think? You think? How do you think technology is uh, leaning in that direction? Some technology. I think really. I, I, well, I that's why we have two segments. We, right, and I honestly believe that we are we we right now exist on this uh, cusp yeah. of technology, and that we don't. We go either the way. The fact that we're here at this point in time right now. It's really difficult for us to recognize where we're at in history. But if that's you take always a step true, back yep. and you look, when you look at the developments that are occurring, the, the the new technology that's coming out, okay, and the pace, the speed at which that technology is emerging, you'll start to realize that we right now are on the on, on teetering on the edge of a choice, and that choice is whether technology is going to be oppressive or whether technology is going to set the human race free. That's where we stand right now. And it's going to be decided, I would say, sometime in the next 20 years at the most, probably much, much sooner. And if things continue to develop in the way that they're developing, at the pace they're developing, it will be much sooner than that. That choice well, is going to be made. Everything is increasing not, like logarithmically from the next to the next it's it's doubling tripling quadrupling right. the it's speed an, it's exponential growth yeah it's Moore's law so we're going to go into move over 3d printing near instant volumetric printing is set to take your place and if you if any of you out there if you regularly go to istate.tv which great place because i run it so it's great uh I put a lot of I give a lot of coverage to the developments going on in 3D printing because I think 3D printing is one of those key. I don't, I don't even know if I want to call it emerging te technology anymore at this point, but you know I'll, I'll say emerging for now because it's not. I mean, there's plenty of people that have never there's heard of 3D, 3D printer, printing yet. Right, there's not a 3D printer in every home. No, no, far from that. So it's still emerging, but man, the stuff that's going on, and the thing about 3D printing, it's it's. It's going to change the game. It's going to empower local communities, free associations, individuals to produce for themselves products that had previously required large-scale systems to do efficiently and effectively. And now this this latest development is is quite interesting. It's a uh, building your 3D printed design one layer at a time might soon be a thing of the past. See, that's the way 3D printing works predominantly right now. It scans one one resin layer at a time, no matter what it's whether it's plastic, even metal, even wood, one layer at a time. So instead of building layer upon layer, the 3D printed items of the future could be flashed in a process that would take a fraction of the time that current layer-by-layer -layer 3D printing techniques currently, re currently require. And the research is being done by a team of folks from Lawrence Livermore, Livermore National Lab, along with UC Berkeley 
the University of Rochester and uh, good old MIT. So the team is using hologram-like 3D images that are flashed upon a resin, a, photosen a photosensitive resin, and they're calling the technique vol volumetric 3D printing. So what do you... I mean, you're talking about coming close to a time where, you know, you order your smartphone and you press a button and boom, there it and is. And your printer and, prints it out. And its printer prints it out instantly. Right. It's like poof. And then right. and when your the, smartphone the, is outmoded, the, go ahead. Here's the big takeaway from this development, and that is that volumetric printing is going to do to 3D printing what the assembly line did for auto manufacturing. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's going to be the same type of impact. You're going to go from you're going to go from painstaking days worth of work to get this, you know, whatever. You see the uh the the, the spaghetti monsters that Bodie made. I didn't what, I'm, oh yeah, I'm yes, 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 yes. You know, Bodie Bodie Agora our host on Tuesdays. Yes. Right, so you go from you know, all this painstaking work to get this one little thing, and the volumetric printing is going to be like, you know, seconds, Pulse. and you have the completed part. Yeah, right. that's, that, that'll be a real game changer. Now, again, if you go to iState.tv, you'll see I, I track – other things that I track with regularity are the developments in batteries, power, and how – I just covered a story today – uh Actually, this was about solid-state batteries and how they've made a discovery that could... I don't quite understand the science because I'm not a super scientific little person, but there's a, an exchange that happens between the electrons that produces a charge. And in the solid state, this exchange between these different electrons is slow. But they think that they have discovered a way to speed that process up dramatically which would basically extend the light of that solid state battery. And then they're, they're so what's happening is energy more and more it's it's well it's more and more likely that you will be able to contain energy in a smaller space that will provide more power that'll make things like this much more possible and for relatively low cost at that these things, these are the types of things. I mean, AI, AI does have promise. I'm not totally done and thinking AI is totally scary. I think there's a lot of promising aspects to AI, but certain aspects to AI definitely favor a centralized authority, which ultimately might be undone by the very monster it created, right. you know, Skynet. <laughs> uh, but then things like this, things like this favor. Right the individual the free association it makes it, it makes it, it basically it tips the balance of practicality towards individuals and free associations people aren't going to just come up idealistically and say you know what i'm sick of this coercive enterprise i want to be a individualist i want free when, associations when they will say it though if they print, see they will say it if they see let's well, go ahead when we can 3d print food it's game over. And and they're working on that. And they're working on right. producing meat that that didn't come from a yeah. animal. animalless meat grown in a test tube. Right. Yeah, right now it's so expensive. In, but but the world that we're heading in, Paul. Is, unbelievable. This is, this is this is what our future looks like. Sex robots. Three D printed food. I don't think sex robots are gonna last. You don't think it's gonna last? I, I think that sex robots will will, that will will resonate un, until well I'll say this until sex robots can absolutely convince you that I, I don't want to be crude or I don't I want to watch how I say this that they're real that for 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 many people I'll say most people I'll just say most people I might be wrong about that but I'm going to suppose that it's most people for most people. The most important aspect of sex is 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 the exchange that e even even for people who 
you know, they do a lot of casual sex. There's still this, this, this part of the aspect of sex is this person wants me. This person desires me. Now, I think there's a large group of people that, you know, it's a power thing or whatever it is. It's, but, but I don't think they're the majority. And so, but there's, there's still, that's the group that may like these robots. But the other ones, the ones that want the connection, the, to know that another human being really wants them, that, that will put themselves in that vulnerable position, that intimate position. I don't think a robot can pull that off ever. I don't know, man. I think I, I think once they're up walking around and not so much like a doll, I think that's a real game changer. When 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 robots walk, when they walk among us, you're, you're always going to wonder. Game changer. Did are they are they or what how, they how are, are because be they've been tell? programmed? How are you going to be able to tell in the first place? Let's say how are you not going to be able to tell? So that's always the question that you'll have. I mean, I understand to a certain extent that's maybe the question that you have with uh, human beings as well. But I think it's a far more profound uh, an unanswerable question if you're talking about intimacy with a robot as opposed to a human being. So I, I don't, I don't think sex robots are, I, I'll say this, maybe I'll, maybe they're not going away. They're not going to go away. They're not going to replace human intimacy. I'll just go out on the record and say that. I think you're, unless, I, I don't know. I think unless human wrong. beings fundamentally change and that's possible too. I mean, right well, now, and, Facebook and, is, and, is, and Yahoo or YouTube and Twitter, they're kind of changing us. It's happening. Well, here's, here, this was my point, right? We're heading in this direction um, of all-encompassing, all-engrossed technology. And it's picking up pace every day at, at, at so much faster. When I said sex robots, I don't mean like the sex robots they have today because that's like – that's like They're uh, nothing. No, they're not yeah, a no. challenge. No, and they're really, like, really expensive. Like, That's another factor. It's like uh, you know a love glove around your iPhone, right now. You know yeah. what I mean. But in thirty years from now, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between if that girl sitting at the bar is real or not. How are you? Yeah. Gonna, how would you tell? They're, they're on Blade AI. Runner. You're going to ask them, you know, right, show them totally pictures of animals and do a retina scan. <laughs> That's Blade Runner. <laughs> That's all you know. Right, 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 right. You have no if empathetic I, reaction to that animal. Like Not a human. Out at the bar. Will you look at these this series of photos, please? Yes. yes. Don't show me pictures of puppies. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, we're going to the puppies. But, that, going right but, to that, the pup. but that combined with you know the the, uh, the volumetric printing, you start to get you start to tread very very close into the realm uh, of science fiction a la Star Trek. With we're the there, rep- man. Rep- we're there. That kind of yeah. Stuff. Yeah, we're I mean? like right we're on right the cusp. We're on the cusp of that. And we're right at this. This happened. There's, there's a decision that human beings are going to come to at some point. And yes, I mean collectively. This doesn't mean monolithically because there's going to be plenty of human beings that are going to disagree with this collective decision. And the collective decision is going to be made. It, it'll be manifest in power. Uh, and the decision is going to be, are human beings fundamentally herd animals that would desire to have some degree of individual expression? Or are they fundamentally individualists who recognize the benefit of cooperative action? So technology is going to give us an, an opportunity as it emerges to make a decision that could last for centuries. We're like this, at the that critical moment in human history. In and in that decision itself, this is where I think um the Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, this is where I think that that really uh really fits in really fits in there. That this that is going to be the first battleground of that decision is what happens in that arena over the course of the next uh, five I don't necessarily years. think that's the case because I think that initially the cryptocurrencies that decided to try to go legit, they're going to be hit, and that includes Bitcoin. But the cryptocurrencies well, see, here, that, are, here, that are not thing. so much talked about right now that that truly are as close as you can be to anonymity that are truly are in that realm, they're, they're not going anywhere. You're, you're not going well, here, to so easily stop Here's them. the thing that, that 98% of the population right now is missing when it comes to cryptocurrency. 
and blockchain in particular, not just cryptocurrency, but the right. blockchain itself. Yeah, and behind the blockchain is, that, is quantum computing, which is going to make blockchain outmoded soon. Right. Well, it's not going to make it outmoded. It's just going to. It, it's it's it going will, to be like going because, from your because you'll be able to use quantum computing to, to totally decrypt gig. blockchain. So, it will then. outmode it. You'll be well, looking at quantum computing it. within the next five years. It. It's going to expand upon it. It's it's going to be an exponential growth. It's going to be a uh, what is it called when uh, two waves constructive constructive interference, not destructive interference when it comes to that realm. But the point of this is, is that what everybody is missing when it comes to blockchain is that it's it goes so far beyond. The, the, the currency, the financial aspect of it. The finance, right. the finance oh, yeah. is just, just a small, the tip of small, the iceberg. Small, small part of blockchain. Right, it's just the tip. Singularity Net is a collective AI built on a blockchain, which the AI will be using AI money to pay for services that the e all the AI does for one another. Right. It's fascinating what's going on with Singularity Net. Yeah, if you're not absolutely. paying attention to that, you should. But what you're going to see is is there's there's going to be a moment where our moments, some moments that lead up to the moment. I don't I don't know how it'll happen, where the balance of power will. I won't say irrevocably, but I'll say it'll tilt in a way that it'll set the state for the next few centuries. And well, sure, I mean if 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 blockchain is successful, if this implementation is successful not only in the not only in financial markets and in finances, but across technology itself period so that, you know, when uh uh all your uh contracting and all that stuff with the you know whether it's a mortgage or for a vehicle or whatever it may be uh sending you know your uh email uh tracking product shipments all that kind of stuff if blockchain is able to do and get to where all the places where it should be it's going to prove that decentralization works and that decentralization works in a big and meaningful way if it fails it's going to become this poster child for why we need centralization they're going to say well this is you don't you remember what happened back there with that bit close well that's part bitcoins. of the story but it's not just blockchain that's emerging there is you know like 3d printing and there is now people may not like robots but robots can you imagine like they have this this uh system that you can get that can it can basically farm uh, like a like a like a little garden for you a little a little house garden in your backyard and and it 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 will it will plant the seeds it'll do everything it'll it it, it does it all you just have to make sure that it continues to work but i mean that's a system that i would if, if and when i can afford it i'm getting it one of them things just turn that baby on and uh it, I mean, this is this is the type of AI. This is this is the type of uses for, for AI and robots that I fully support. That gives right. me autonomy. Right. So we'll see what happens, but I think we're going to wrap this show up. We went a little long, which is not untypical for us, and that's okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's okay. We don't, you know, we have a general plan for this is what our shows are, but I am. I'm, I lean libertarian, so I don't right. generally set up rigid we, systems that you have to follow. We, we are the arbiters of our own destiny. Yes, yes. There you go. I won't. I don't like the phrase "own yourself," but I do like the phrase "stand on your preferences" and uh, "own your preferences." So we own our preferences. That's what we do here. So we will not be on tomorrow night. No, I wire Pulse Thursday because I am going to be going to a concert to see my daughter, and she's going to be singing, she's going to be playing the clarinet, and she's going to be playing the bassoon. And next week, 
two of the three days, uh, or two of the four days, Tuesday and Wednesday. So you won't see Niz next Wednesday. And I didn't, yesterday we did the show and I was announcing you'll see Bowie and I next Tuesday. But no, I wasn't lying. I just didn't know. Oh, no, no. My daughter has a concert next Tuesday as well that I have to go to. Well, I want to go to. I don't have to. I want to. And then Wednesday, I get to watch my wife play the bassoon in a concert because all these, basically these Christmas concerts, my wife plays in lo local orchestras. So, so next week, the shows will be Monday and Thursday. And that's it because concerts. So we'll God. see you next Monday. We and Professor Rambo will be talking guns. We'll be talking world news. And we'll be talking prepper stuff. That's what we do next oh week. If you guys have noticed, by the way, there's a trend with these shows. You know, the way that I do the introduction, I, you know, fear is the mind killer. And, and yes, I know I'm using FDR and he's, he's a hideous human being, but right. he's, he's right. Fresh. The only thing to fear is fear itself. And uh, fear can be a motivator that turns into positive, forward, fruitful action, or it could be a paralyzer. So our shows talk, start off, and we talk about the fear. We talk about things that are going on that maybe maybe you should be paying attention to, maybe should concern you. But we end our shows, every show, Monday through Thursday. It ends with a segment that concentrates on solution on hope, on forward action, because I don't think that we need to live in fear. I think that we should, and, and, and that doesn't mean, that doesn't guarantee a good outcome, but what guarantees a bad outcome is living in fear. So, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to pay attention, but I'm not going to live in that fear. You got any last remarks? Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. I say no you don't prepare for the worst. I say you prepare for both the worst and the best. Mm. You don't just okay. prepare for the worst. Because then what are you doing? You're totally defensive. And you're waiting for the hammer to fall. Okay, to a certain degree, oh yeah. Like, that's why we do prepper. I prepper on, right. on Mondays. That, that's preparing for the worst. And there, there's a place for that. There's preparing for the best, too. And that and trying to make it the best. So, so there you go. That's the underlying and one philosophy of I wire pulse. Go ahead. And one other thing. Yes. Friday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. Oh yes, almost forgot. On lrn.fm on the Liberty Radio Network, uh, you should tune in 10 p.m. Eastern uh, to the Torture Report, and you could hear me, myself, the one Trinis, and uh, Mr. Matthew Taylor talk about all kinds of nonsense from politics to. Uh, tech to teledildonics, all kinds of stuff. Teledildonics? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Gotta if talk about that, that sometime episode, on this show. If you missed that episode, you missed a good one. Y you need to have a good place for people to go to hear them archives. I keep saying that to you, dude. You got to do it. Yeah, get the LRN download do something. That. I mean, I have. I, I never have get to listen to your show because I'm I never can't... there on Friday nights. I usually, I generally record them. If I remember to hit record on my soundboard, I record them. So I have a bunch that are recorded. But LRN doesn't really keep uh, uh, an need, archive. You, you need to I have a website. Just... You know what? You don't even have a website. If you want, until you get a website. No. If you have Facebook a website, page. use that. If you don't, you could use my website. I get traffic. We have you a get Facebook stuff. page. Huh? I don't Facebook mean a Facebook page. page. I mean a freaking website, dude. But anyway, we'll talk about this another time. So we'll see you <laughs> next Monday. It'll be Professor Rambo and I. I thank everybody that uh, joined us here on uh, iWire Pulse Wednesday with the one true Niz and myself. Well, we'll see you. I, I still haven't come up with a, with a great closing line. I'm going to work on it. But eventually I'll, I'll have a closing slogan. I don't right now. So I'll just say goodbye. You want to say goodbye? <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.